Amen. I heard the singing in the office. You didn't have to stop when I did. Amen. Thank you for this peace. Glory be to God. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We are now in 2020. Listen, I know for the fact that I shouldn't be here. Amen. But I uh, am here. Each of you are here because the Lord brought us through uh, a pandemic. Amen. Some of us sickness. Some of us uh, 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 home situations, financials. I'm just calling roll. You know, I need to prepare for worship. Amen. Is anybody grateful? Hallelujah. For what did the Lord did for you in 2021? And we are just delighted. Amen. To be in 2022. Amen. We're standing all over the sanctuary, united in spirit. Amen. But we are not joined. Let us now join together. Keep those beautiful voices together as we sing our God. Praise God, praise Yeah, so fun. 
Shall you know, not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I read this morning from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 15 through 19, and 18 verse. Amen. Amen. All as well below the sky. Savior says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. Another year, God has blessed us, and we are His blessed people. Amen. So, on behalf of our pastor, Mother Tammy Mason, we just want to welcome each of you here today. Those here in person, those on YouTube, and those on our conference call, we just welcome you, and we just pray that each of you, as you begin this new year. You will look to the hills and know that all of your help, it comes from the Lord. Yeah. Every blessing we receive, it comes from God. Above. And so we're just thankful. We are thankful people this morning. Amen. And so we just pray that the message will keep you uplifted and strengthen you throughout the week. Yeah. For our announcements, uh, <clears throat> Bible study on Wednesday night, 6 30, we assume, is to be led by sisters Vivian, Kathy, Willow, Joyce, and to it. Our board meeting will be January 11th at 7 p.m. We assume. So we have uh, we have several January birthdays that we'd like to acknowledge. There are some in the house and some not. But on January the 6th, we have Sister Deborah Bond. January the 8th, we have Sister Lorena Baxter. On January the 27th, we have Monica Davis. January the 18th, Sister Sandra Coughlin. And we have in house today, Sister Yolanda Oakley, who's on January the 10th. Mm -hmm. So we just like to wish them a happy birthday beforehand, and we will continue to send shout outs throughout the month of January. Uh, we are, would like to uh, also continue to pray for our, those on our care and concern. We just lift them up on a daily basis, call them, 
um, send them a card or whatever you have to do just to let them know that you care about them. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a card from one of my members, and it says, Thanks from me, just a little line or two to bring my warmest thanks to you. And this is from Sister Annie Price, and it's to, and it's to the uh, Women's Missionary Society for her Christmas gift. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Hey, man, well, happy birthday for all of our birthdays. Do you want me to sing to you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful birthday since you and all of our January birthdays. I also want to say uh, just a special hello and good morning. Everyone kind of turn around and wave back there at the camera. Well, just throw your hand up. We'll say good morning to Sister Amy Frierson. Uh, I had a wonderful conversation with her this week, and I thank Sister Gwen Bailey for uh, speaking with her as well and just keeping me informed. But uh, she uh, is enjoying watching the service. Amen. Uh, she has been set up to enjoy the service on, on YouTube now. Amen. So we just want to say good morning to you, Sister Frierson. We love you. And, and you are here with us because you are in our heart and in our spirit. God bless you. And again, and again, good morning to those of you who are joining us via uh, Facebook and uh, calling in, etc. Uh, God bless you. Happy New Year. We're so glad that uh, you're worshiping with us. And so continue to come. You're welcome anytime we might got for this virtual environment and that that the chapel is on the cutting edge. Amen. That we're able to provide a hybrid worship service. That's a blessing. We ought to give God a blessing. I do have a few announcements, so go ahead and get comfortable uh, because I do have a few things that I would like to put before you uh, very, very quickly. The first one is that the 13th Episcopal District is having a prayer and praise service on today. Um, that is at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, that's a virtual prayer, praise, and word worship experience and so you can join this via zoom uh, the information has been emailed to you as well as text if i recall uh, but i will make sure it's text i can't think at the moment um, but i'll send that out after service via text just to make sure you have it so that you can be a part of that come on now let's continue to worship god uh, in this new year also want to ask uh, ministry leaders, now you can look up if you're gotten down on your phone, ministry leaders, presidents, pro teams, directors, I'm asking you to please email me your ministry proposals for 2022. What does that mean? That's a fancy way of me asking you to share with me what God has given you for your ministry that you're leading. Amen. So please email that to me, or if you want to write it down, that's fine, and just slip it in the, the uh, Box there outside my door, but it's important to me to hear from you uh, what God is saying to you. A few of you I've already met with, and so I thank you. You know who you are. Others of you, I look forward to hearing from you. I'm excited uh, to know what the Lord has put into your spirit as we prepare for ministry uh, in this year. Also, I want to inform you of a Martin Luther King day event that will be here in Columbia. I believe it's every year. I have seen it uh, before, and so I'll be sending more information out about that. Uh, is that on that Monday? Yes. Um, it's on the, on the actual day. It's on that Monday, and so I'll send that out to you. It'll be on our Facebook as well as our Faith Life site that you can access via our website, and, uh, and I'll make sure that you have that information. Last but not least, if you could thanks for me. I will have this for you, um, print it for you uh, before you leave service. But one of the things I want to talk to us about this year, and yes, it's part of our worship through giving, we're preparing uh, ourselves to give. But what I want to start out with is talking to us about uh, striving to tithe. Amen. Uh, our vision for this year is uh, based on the Great Commission to go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. 
And one of the ways that we do that um, is through our giving. And so uh, you may be able to see it there, but you'll have a, a hard copy. Those of you who are joining virtually, uh, if you go there to our website, you'll be able to see it there as well. But scripture encourages us to give 10% or a tithe to the work of God's kingdom. This has its roots in the agricultural economy of Israel. When a tenth of the crops harvested was set apart as an offering to God. This produce was used for the works of mercy and temple needs. Generosity, my brothers and sisters, is a part of our heritage as people of faith. And so while 10% may seem challenging at first, no worries, you can do it. And we're going to keep that, uh, make it easy for us to do it through this striving to tie program. Your giving helps support the church in its day-to-day -day expenses, but it also helps Bethel Chapel be a source of help and hope in the community through its various ministries. So I'm asking that we please pray and trust God to lead us to provide for us in this faith journey to increase our giving. And so what you'll have provided is a chart that will help you know what 10% looks like. For example, if your monthly income is $500, then 10% of that is $50 and, and so forth. So based on your income, you can gauge what a 10% tithe looks like. And so I'm asking us, even this morning, as we prepare now to give, the ushers are uh, taking their positions. As you prepare to, to sow into the ministry on this morning, I'm not only asking uh, that we sow an offering, but I'm asking us to be intentional about tithing because actually your tithe comes before your offering. Can I teach you the point? So tithe and offering, amen. If you, if you will uh, do your best uh, to, to begin that new, let's make that a resolution. If there's any good resolutions, tithe into the kingdom is a good one. And we'll teach you about that another time, about seed time and harvest time. But does anybody know that when you sow into the kingdom, you get it back abundantly? Amen. And so the ushers are coming now. Um, the first tray will be for the tithe and offering, and the second tray held by Sister. Um, are you the wrong? Did you switch them out? Oh, Sister Polk, you do have the missionary? Okay. So Sister Polk is holding the missionary tray, and then Brother uh, Bailey is in front of her with the tithe and offering. Those of you who are joining us via YouTube, I want to invite you to sow into the ministry as well. And listen, you're not just sowing into Bethel Chapel, but you're also sowing into the kingdom of God. Amen. And so we want to invite you to give. If you visit the website at BethelBelieves.com, uh, you will find a link there that takes you to uh, the uh, opportunity to give. But also, listen, if you want to just pick up your phone and text your um, tithe and offering here to the church, you can do that by texting give and the amount. So if you want to sow $20, say give 20 to 931-219-2343, and you have that way of giving as well. So I thank you for allowing me to take time to talk about uh, part of the the vision for us for this year is to increase our giving so that we are able to continue uh, to be, as I said, a source of hope and help here in the community and beyond. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Let us pray. Father oh God, here we are before you, Lord God. First, we just want to say thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to enter in this year of 2022. Now, Father God, we pray your blessing, Lord, we leave our gifts back to you. Lord, let them be used for the uplifting and the upbuilding of your kingdom. These are all things we pray. It is in that precious man that you allow to come to take away our sins. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you.
So at this time, according to the order of service, there is a sign of preparation. And I would certainly, um, certainly appreciate that class of the word five going forward. And so, you know, since the uh, since a few weeks ago, for whatever reason, the word sweet has been in my spirit. And I am developing it because when the Lord puts a word in your spirit, he's telling you something. And I know some of the scriptures are sweeter than a honeycomb and all of these different things. And so I um, I plan on continuing to seek God about what he's saying to me. But there is a, a hymn that I love as well. Uh, there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. It's hymn number 196. It won't be up on the, on the monitor. And it's okay, I'll lead us through it. But if we could just center ourselves before the word of God goes forth, because I, I know there is a word from God, and I am praying about the busyness that goes on before service. Um, but there has to be a time to set an atmosphere. I could jump into the word, but I also believe in setting that atmosphere so the word falls on good ground. Amen. So would you join me now in the Singing, there's a sweet, sweet, sweet. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I God, as we hear from you, God, we quiet our spirits so that we can be in unison with your movement in this place. God, in this new year, we are seeking, God, more of you, not more things, God, but simply more of you. And so, God, I pray that as this message that you have given your servant, to share with your people on this morning. I pray, God, that our hearts and minds in an atmosphere that's been established that is pleasing unto you. Now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, that can be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight. For you, O oh Lord, are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> The word of the Lord on this morning is taken from Luke 5, verses 38 through 39. And that's Luke 5, 
verses 38 through 39. And I'll be speaking to you from a message expecting you in 2022. The word of the Lord says in Luke 5, verse 38 and 39, he told them this parable. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out and the wine skins will be full. No, new wine must. Somebody say must. Uh, new wine must be poured into new wine skins. And no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for he says the old is better. What comes to mind when we hear the word new? Think about that for just a minute. New. Images of a new car, a new house, that new dress you saw in Macy's, a new job, or a new career, the newest Xbox, PlayStation 5, it might be up to six now, iPhone 12, and I might still be behind, I think, with the iPhone 13. But how often do we think about a new us? How often do we think about ourselves becoming a new person, new ways of thinking, new ways of doing. Because when we embrace newness in Christ, not just the day we walk down the aisle and accept Christ as our Savior, but every day. Because every day God desires to do something new in us and through us. Not just dropping new and shiny things into our laps, but giving us newness of life. Life exists in us and not in things. Amen? Amen. And it, it is with this understanding that I want us to key in on the perfecting work, perfecting meaning maturing work, the new, the maturing, the transformative work taking place in the body of Christ. And this is wonderful news to us because the fact of the matter is that the problem is not getting things. It's keeping them. Yeah, yeah. And the problem, Reverend Barner, is not starting something, but it's finishing what we started. Can I get a witness on this morning? So this requires us to change, not God. And while the process of change may not be easy, because we like what is familiar, we're more comfortable with things being just the way they are. After all, it's been working for 100 plus years. Well, if anyone has not been therefore immune to the countless men and women of God around the world saying that we're not going back to the way things used to be, then you also know that as it says in verse 38, and you uh, are crystal clear that what you have been doing in your life may or may not sustain you in this new season. Okay. And so the option is to choose life or choose death. Mm. to thrive or to just decay away. Mm. And what a travesty that would be when our Savior came to give us an abundant life. So let's walk through the word together on this morning and learn how we can be vessels prepared for the new manifestations of God in our lives and in our church. First, to stay true to the text. I want to give you the backdrop of what is taking place. In Luke chapter five, verse 33, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were questioning Jesus about fasting. In fact, some of your Bibles may have the subtopic Jesus questioned about fasting. The Pharisees were trying to trap Jesus again. They were often seeking to discredit Jesus's ministry. And so they said to Jesus, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do ours. But your disciples, they just go on eating and drinking. 
This was to suggest they were right and Jesus and his disciples somehow were wrong. And so Jesus responds to them in verse 34 by sharing the parable of the bridegroom, basically telling the Pharisees that his disciples were not fasting because he was there with them. But when he is taken away from them, then they will fast. He was pointing back to Old Testament scripture, a messianic prophecy of God as the bridegroom of Israel, something the teachers of the law should have understood, but they did not. Knowing the hardened hearts of the Pharisees and their unwillingness to accept the fact that a new covenant of grace was established through Jesus Christ, one that free God, God's people from the condemnation of the law because they did not get this. Jesus then went on to use the analogy of old wineskin, not being able to contain new wine because it has become too rigid. And this is where I want to spend the rest of my time on this morning. Verse 38 says, and no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wine skins. Yes. Jesus wants us to know that we cannot fit the new life he has for us into our old lifestyle and habits. Amen. Our Amen. finite and sometimes carnal way of thinking and doing things does not align with those of a divine, omniscient, and holy God. Amen. This is why we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Yes. And this can be challenging because, as I said, the old is familiar, it's comfortable, and it does not challenge or stretch us. But how can God enlarge our territory for those who like to reference the prayer of Jabez or Yahweh, which is the original Hebrew? But, but how can God enlarge our territory if we keep God boxed in? only able to move in our allowed spaces. We ask God to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. But then limited faith dosses the fuse and we only get a spark, just a little of what God has for us. But I know on this morning, there are two or three of you who are tired and frustrated with sports, yeah. only getting so far in your career, only getting so far in your education, in ministry, in relationships. So please forgive me, Miss Erica Campbell, but I want somebody to testify on this morning that you don't need just a little bit more, Jesus. Hello, somebody. Yeah. I need all of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I don't need I need Jesus to purify me with his and to wash me white as snow. Am I talking to anybody on this morning? I need Jesus to create in me a clean heart and to renew a right spirit in me. Will somebody testify that a little Jesus just won't do? You're ready to position yourself to be lenders and not borrowers. You're ready to be the head and not the tail. You're ready to be God chasers and demon busters. Yeah. Tell your neighbor that 99 and a half won't do. Because you're wrapped up. You're tied up. And you're tangled up in Jesus. Second yeah. Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. The new wine in our text today represents new life in Jesus Christ. The wine skins are symbolic of vessels that contain the wine, and that's you and me. And according to Jesus Christ, we can either be old wine skins. Oh, we can be the new. Oh, I'm going to give somebody a hint on this morning. We do want to be the new wineskins. Because it means that we are growing in the word of God. 
it means that we are in tune with the spirit of God. And the new life we have been given won't be anything less than what God says in his word. But if we have some places in our life where the old wine schemes, our old habits that creep up from time to time, I want somebody to know that all is not lost. There is this thing that we don't like to talk about in the church much anymore, uh, but it's called repentance. Yes, to repent means to turn away from. It means to acknowledge our shortcoming and ask God to forgive us and lead us the rest of this journey. My brothers and my sisters, repentance is about relationship. Yes. Being in and staying in right relationship with our loving Father. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when we mess up, somebody say just mess up. The Bible says that we all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. I know some of you have a golden halo over your head. And I know others of you came out of the womb perfect and have been that way even until this 10 a.m. hour, but for the rest of us who don't mind being a witness on this morning, we recognize that we haven't gotten it right all of the time, but thank God, hallelujah, if we confess our sins to the Lord, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us and remember our mess ups no more. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, but the old wine skins. Oh, don't be the old wine skins, brothers and sisters, because the Pharisees in this parable represent the old wine skins, rigid people who won't let go of their way of thinking and their way of doing things. You see this manifested when individuals are stuck in the past, even when there is obvious stagnation and decline in the place they're in. When loyalties are tied to people and things from the past, it's a spiritual paralysis of not being able to receive fresh revelation from God where and where there is lack of vision. Yeah. And that means the ability to see what God is orchestrating in the spiritual realm and manifesting in the natural realm. People can't like that can't see it because their mind has no room for expansion. And you know what happens when there is no vision. The word of the Lord says, where there is no vision, the people perish. The Pharisees, just like old wineskins, were rigid. Thought they knew better than God. They were not flexible. They were intolerable and they were unteachable. There is no place for this in the kingdom of God. Instead of giving to the needy, the Pharisees embezzled money and exploited the most vulnerable. They extended judgment and condemnation instead of grace and mercy. They spread hatred and division instead of love and unity. And I can assure you that if you look around, you will see that this same Pharisee spirit is in operation today. When the ones making decisions in the, uh, in the government seek to uh, uh, feed their own pockets and prosper their own families, then Pharaoh is in operation. When a, a black man is, is, is murdered, pulled over for a tag violation, and ends up dead, let me tell you something, Pharaoh is in operation. When individuals are unaccepting of others, and act as catalysts in rampant acts of racism and sexism and heterosexism, classism, narcissism, and all the other negative impactful isms, Pharaoh is in operation. When people are not willing to embrace the good that comes with change and are willing to free themselves and, and others from the bondage of how things used to be done for the past 2,000 years, and when they make it their life mission to try and thwart, hear me, and when an individual, a spirit working through an individual, makes it their life mission to try and thwart the move of God, Pharisee is in operation. Where there is rebellion and an unwillingness to work together, Pharisee is in operation. 
And that is the old wine skin that God wants to deliver us from. Somebody say, don't be the old wine skin. Oh, but let's talk about the new wine skin. A perfecting work is taking place on the inside. That's going to produce the good stuff. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You see, during the process of making wine, the grapes are first pressed down. And some of you may have seen this on, on uh, I Love Lucy. I'm telling my age a little bit right now. But if, if anyone has seen the famous clip of, of Lucy standing in the tub of grapes and, and she's pressing down on the grapes and, and stomping on them and, and, and she's pressing them to get all, all the, the grape juice out and, and she does it until they're empty inside. Somebody will catch that later. And after the grapes are pressed, they're put into an oxygen-free container where yeast forms, and, and then the yeast converts the sugar from grape juice into alcohol, and, and then the alcohol goes through its process, come on somebody, until the set time of consumption. You see, it's vital for the wine skin to be durable and flexible enough to withstand the process that is going on inside of it. Otherwise, the wine skin bursts and all the wine just runs out. Where am I going with this? I, I hear you asking. Thank God for sending us his son, Jesus Christ, to save us from ourselves. Thank God for his word and the work of the Holy Spirit inside of us. This is why we can say greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And just like the grapes had to go through some pressure to become fine wine, hallelujah. I believe I can get somebody to testify that you've been through some pressures of your own. The odds were stacked against you. The fat lady was clearing her throat to sing and you were stretched beyond what you thought you could bear. But can I get a witness in this place? And who knows that God will not put more on this than you can bear. How you know you're the new wine skin. The old you would have buckled under the pressure. That old wine skin would not have turned the other cheek. But hallelujah, thank you that you're the new wine skin. The old wine skin would have accepted defeat and thrown in the towel. Oh, somebody knows that the enemy tried it. The enemy gave it a go. But he forgot that you are the new wine skin, that you are a new creation. This time the pressure made you better instead of bitter, humble instead of hard headed and hard hearted. It made you a worshiper instead of a whiner. Like Paul, you have a testimony that you were hard pressed on every side, but yet you were not crushed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed, because God is good all the time, and all the time. Paul understood the pressure of life, yet he encouraged us to count it all joy. Right into Timothy, Paul said his life was being poured out like a drink offering. He was beaten and stoned and shipwrecked. He was beaten by a snake. He was imprisoned and hungry, cold and often destitute. And yet he continued to say in verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have kept the faith. I'm talking about new wine skin on this morning. The process to become a new is necessary. The decision to spread the gospel isn't always in the comfort of air conditioning. Man. With people who accept you, yeah. uh, the spreading of the gospel isn't always going to be comfortable. And somebody in this place knows that there will be headaches more than you can count. But I want to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, that if you finish the race, there is a greater reward, yeah. one of more value than silver and gold. Yeah. It's hearing the master say, 
Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Somebody touch yourself and say, I'm the new wine skin. Hallelujah. Lastly, as I prepare to go to my seat and we prepare for our communion service. I mentioned this earlier. Not only did the parable of the old and new wineskin represent the necessity of a new way of thinking, it also calls for a new way of doing. Now it's time to not only talk the talk, amen. Yeah. But in 2022, God has an expectation of the body of Christ to also walk the walk. Yeah. We must not only be hearers of the word, but also doers. There's a Greek philosopher who's quoted as saying, change is the only constant in life. But God put it this way in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything, there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heavens. We must rightly discern what season God is in and get with his program. While the rituals and the traditions of the past serve a purpose and still have great significance to what is happening in the now. We must be able to also discern what God is trying to do in new ways. Yeah. The new mind of the Holy Spirit could not be contained in Pharisaic propaganda. Mm. The new life Jesus brings needs visionaries connected to the heart and mind of Christ. Yeah. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And right now, God is calling for the radicals, the out-of-the-box thinkers, the bold and the courageous. Yeah. And let me tell you, you can't be a part of this move of God if, if you're scary. You can't be a part of this if you need folk to like you and affirm you. Uh -huh. Newsflash. If they hated Jesus and crucified Jesus, yeah. what makes you think everybody's going to love you and sing your praises? Yeah. But the new minds that are being called forth to do monumental works in the body of Christ, yeah. not for their glory. Oh, don't get it twisted, Pharisees. But it's all for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise God for what our ancestors did. Blood, sweat, and tears paved the way for us to be here. But I challenge you to believe on this morning that there is still a work to be done yeah. that God is calling and has equipped us to do even greater works. Right. How many of you know there are still souls that need salvation? Yeah. There are lives void of love and compassion. Yeah. There are young people who need a relevant message. So their loyalty is to God and not guns and games. Can I get a witness that there is still a work to be done? Yeah. The Pharisees would not budge from the law of the Old Testament and were leading those who followed them away from God instead of towards him. And don't be fooled, there are people in the church, I dare say, who have an anchor around their heart and their head who will never embrace doing anything different than what they've been doing and will seek to get others on the bandwagon with them. But I need somebody to testify and to understand that you are being called to a radical move of God. God needs some radical followers who will rebuke that Pharisee spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and do relevant life changing ministry yeah. is anybody ready yeah. to get off of the train of insanity yeah. doing the same thing yeah. and expecting a different result yeah. are you ready for something new yeah. come on and give god yeah. praise yeah. if you're ready people praise god praise praise this season the old has passed away and the old, old things are new. Somebody say, I'm expecting you and I'm doing you in 2022. The message 
remains the same, but the mode of delivery does not. Somebody knows that records and albums were good for their time. And they're still used for various reasons today. But unless our young people want to be a DJ, they need some things that they can download. They need visuals. Amen, somebody. It's nothing wrong with the old. But God is calling us to expand our minds and do the work of relevant ministry. I love some of the old songs. Choir, praise team. But I don't want to hear I'm coming up the rough side of the mountain. I know I'm having some challenges and some difficulties. Inspire me yeah. and help me give God glory for every mountain he sees me through. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So where am I going? If we're going to keep this gospel relevant to the lives of people in today's society, we are going to have to look at how we engage others in the worship experience yeah. and other aspects of ministry. Amen. I've stepped out here now, so I might as well say it. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There is kingdom building work to be done, and two people cannot do it. And they're not meant to do it. Because 1 Corinthians 12 and 7 says, Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So that means everybody in here <laughs> has at least one gift. And the body of Christ has need of thee. So when appeals are made for volunteers, Somebody needs to step up and raise their hand and say, here I am, Lord, send me. Maybe God wants to use you as a change agent. If you want youth ministry, parents, you have to be involved. College ministry, young adults have to be involved. Usher, choir, bowling, and I don't know. Skateboard and whatever it is. It takes servant leaders to make it happen. It's easy to critique, but how I can tell you, tell you something. The ones critiquing are usually the ones not doing anything. I know. I know. Yeah. And clearly, they have too much time on their hands. But the people who are doing real ministry are about their father's business. Yeah. And come what may, they're not going back to what it was. And they're not quitters. They don't quit every time something said they don't like or something they don't want to do. Because they're new wine skin and they're ready for something new. Yeah. There's a clarion call sounding from the heavenly ground. And I know there are a remnant of people, the new wine skin, who feel the same yearning in your spirit that it's time to gird ourselves up and step out on faith yeah. to do what God has shown us yeah. in dreams, in visions, and spoken to us through his word. Yeah. It's time to take on the giants. Is anybody ready? Yeah. It's time to take on the giants of violence, the giants of poverty, inadequate and disproportionate educational opportunities. It's time to take on the giants of gentrification. Yeah. It's time to take on the giants of racism and sexism and classism. Yeah. It's time to take on the strongholds in the church. Yeah. It's time to build and to plant, just like it's time to uproot and to tear down. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody say that it's time for something new in 2022. Yeah. It's time. If not now, when? And don't be afraid, my brothers. Don't be afraid, my sisters. For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, no. but of power and love and a sound mind. David took on a giant, and he had every reason to be concerned when he went up big old bad Goliath. But he knew that if God be for him, who could be against him? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. You may not have the degree. You may not have the popularity. You may not sing like, preach like, usher like, pray like, talk like, play an instrument like somebody else. But that's all right. Because God made you just the way he wants 
cost you to be. The word of the Lord says that God doesn't call the qualified. Hallelujah. But God qualifies the call. Oh, I'm finished, family. But God is doing a new work in us. Yes. A work that not only brings restoration, but one that also, hear me, brings elevation. Yes. The things that God has planned for you cannot be contained in old ways of thinking and doing. Yes. I need somebody to testify that you won't be restrained by the boundaries, the restrictions, and the limitations of people who can't see what you see. Yes. Glory be to God. Be to God. Nobody yes. else has to get it. Uh -huh. Nobody else has to like it. But when you're new wine, your out-of-the-box ideas and energy and spirit of excellence yeah. are bringing generational significance yeah. to the body of Christ. You sat silent long enough. You've observed me and other things long enough. Yeah. Rise up and take hold of your destiny. Yeah. We are, are now in 2022. So live in 2022. Yeah. And forget those things which are behind and press, press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, Expect something new and do something new in 2022. Amen. Amen. We're standing to our feet all over this place. The Lord is speaking to us in this new year. The number of the year may change. Mm -hmm. But what about your heart? What about your mind? Mm -hmm. What about your spirit? What about your soul? God is speaking to us in this moment as He endeavors to create in us clean heart and to renew the right spirit with us. If you're here this morning, you've been striving and many feel like you're, you're tired and, and fighting this battle and trying to do it on your own, that's because you can't change for yourself. You need God's power to come in and change you and make you the way he desires for you to be. It's a simple Really simple step of belief. That if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, the one who changed water to wine, the one who changed those who were blind so that they would be able to see, the one who spoke and last but came back to life, if you put your life, your trust in his hands, he will change you, he will make you the way he desires for you to be, that you will bring him glory, honor, and praise. If there's one this morning that desires to come, to say yes to Jesus. Yes, I submit and surrender my life to you. Make me new, God, to be that new wine skin that you may put your new spirit within me. I don't want to live the same. I don't want to do things the same old way. All you have to say is change me, oh God. Is there anybody this morning that wants to cry out, change me, oh God. Make me brand new. <laughs> I don't want to just exist every day, but I want to fulfill your will and your purpose. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is a good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Is there one this morning? The desires to come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just 
spirit to do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He came, yes, he was born, he lived, he served, he loved, he died upon Calvary cross, but he rose to him on the third day with all power. And now you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins that are in love and charity with your name, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God. Draw near with faith in your spirit. Take this holy sacrament and accomplish by meekly kneeling, meekly kneeling humbly this morning in faith. As we come to the Lord and we say our general confession, we pray it together this morning. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all things. We acknowledge it as well by manifold sin and wickedness. We from time to time most rigorously have committed a thought word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath in the nation of us. We learn us to repair our heart and disarm for deeds of his sins. Remember us of the end of the of us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past. Grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy, did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious name until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partaking of his most blessed body and the who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples 
<laughs> Say, take, eat this, for this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for me, for the remission of sin. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare to share in the blood and the wine together. The bread which represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us hear the word together. The wine, which represents the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Let us drink together. Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may rest, rule, and abide with each of us both now and forever. Until we meet again, let us all sing. Amen. Amen. 